Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob. Bidolf. Now, I am a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen some of my books before. Have you seen this one? This is my latest picture book. It's called Gigantic. It's all about this blue whale here, who is a very small blue whale, but he has a very big name, Gigantic. And in this story, I'm very proud of this story, but in this story, along with his, the help of his friend Myrtle here, Gigantic learns a very important lesson. Basically, it doesn't matter how big you are, it's all about the size of your heart. That's what really counts. So check that one out. I'm very proud of that story. Maybe you've seen some of my chapter books. Have you seen the Peanut Jones books? This one here is called Peanut Jones and the End of the Rainbow. And this is the third in a series of three. So this is the final book in the series. All about Peanut here who finds a magic pencil. Whatever she draws with that pencil, it becomes real. So she draws a door which leads her into an entirely illustrated world. And she thinks that maybe her missing dad is somewhere in this illustrated world. And as you can see, I have illustrated this book very, very heavily. Lots and lots of drawings in there that took me absolutely ages. <laughs> so do check it out and do, you know, pay attention to the drawings because they took me a long time. But I'm super proud of this series. But there's one other book that I want to tell you about before we get on to our drawing video. And it's a very, very special book because this year I'm very, very lucky. I have been chosen as one of the official World Book Day authors stroke illustrators and that means I got to write a very special special story and illustrate a very special story especially for this year's World Book Day and this is that book that I've written and illustrated look isn't it cute it's a tiny little book this one it's like it's a little bit bigger than Mr Man book something like that but it's called Charlie McGrew and the horse that he drew and the reason that these World Book Day see there's the World Book Day logo this year it's on the 7th of March 2024 in the UK here um, the reason this is so special is because as it says there this is a free book Every child in the UK gets given a token which they can exchange for one of the official World Book Day books. And this is my contribution to it. Um, and if you spend your token on another book, then um, you can buy any of these World Book Day books. And they're only one pound each. So super, super value. Um, but I'm so proud of this one because it's a draw with Rob story. And that's, this is the first book that I've written like this. But what it means is, look, I... Here we go, let's start of the book. This is the story of Charlie McGrew, a regular art-loving kid just like you. He lives in a flat on the 17th floor with a sign that says, sorry, no pets on the door. But look, can you see this little pencil? It says, add the other residence. It's got a little Draw With Rob logo on it. And look, I've started the drawing off, but I've left blank spaces for you to finish the drawing off. And that's because this is the storybook you are allowed to draw in. I have started the story off, but I need your help to finish it. So do check that one out, okay? World Book Day is coming very soon. So make sure you do some seriously good reading. But listen, <clears throat> we are here today to do a drawing together. And this is a kind of special episode because very soon here in the UK, it is Pancake Day. <gasps> one of my very favorite days of the year and it has been since I was a little boy. Do you know why? Because I love pancakes. Now for those of you that don't live in the UK or in uh, in Europe, you might not even know what Pancake Day is, but it's got another name here in Europe. It's called Shrove Tuesday and it's like it's like the traditional feast day um, before the start of Lent, okay, in the kind of religious calendar, I guess. Um, and Lent is a very famous uh, fasting period Okay, so you're meant to fast, I think, for about a month. Uh, can you tell that I don't do it? <laughs> because I don't really know how long you're meant to fast for. But I know you're meant to kind of fast for about a month. So traditionally, Shrove Tuesday was the day when you would have a big old feast before you started fasting. It was your kind of, also it was your last opportunity to use up all your eggs and various fats before fasting. So people decided to make pancakes on Shrove Tuesday and it became known as kind of pancake day. And basically it's just an excuse to have your dinner and then for pudding have as many pancakes as you can possibly eat. <laughs> so to celebrate this day of days, I thought we could draw a little pancake 
character together. We've drawn lots of food characters, haven't we? We've drawn cupcakes and we've drawn pizza people. We've drawn all sorts of stuff and I really like doing it. It's a super fun thing to do. I like making inanimate objects like food. I like giving them a little character, a little personality by adding eyes and a mouth and that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to draw a little pancake character. I thought that would be super fun. What do you think? Let's do it, shall we? Right, just in case you haven't watched one of these Draw With Rob videos before, this is how they work. Lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing. I say, that's nonsense. Everybody can draw. Some people just need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in. That's where I come in. Because what we're going to do, we're going to break this drawing down into little bite-sized pieces. Pardon the pun. So what that means is, I'm going to draw a little bit on my piece of paper here. Then you can pause this video and you can draw what I draw. Start me up again. I will draw a little bit more. Pause me. Copy what I do. I will draw some more. Then you will draw. Then I will draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. <laughs> By the end, we are going to end up with a little pancake character that is good enough to eat. So shall we start? Should we get on with it? Let's do this, shall we? What you're going to need is a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, maybe something to colour with a bit later on. If you haven't got anything to colour with, don't worry. You can just use your pencil to shade yours in. But I'm going to colour mine in. And let's make a start then, shall we? The very first thing that I want you to do. Now, when I was thinking about how to draw a little pancake character, there is a very easy way to do it. You just draw a great big sort of slightly wobbly circle, add a couple of eyes and a couple of legs, colour it in sort of yellowy brown with a few spots here and there. Bada boom, that is your pancake character. But I thought we're gonna do something a little bit, little bit more kind of, with a bit more detail in there. So what I want you to do, instead of drawing a great big circle, we're gonna draw about half a circle. So we're gonna draw like a semi-circle, quite big in the middle of your page, like that. And as I say, pancakes are not perfectly round. So just add a few little bumps here and there in your semi-circle, like that. So sort of a bumpy, semicircle. Nice, easy start to our little pancake character drawing. Okay, now this is where we're going to change things up a bit because I don't know about you, but ever since I was a little boy when my mum and my dad would make me pancakes, we would always, they would make the pancakes really super fun. Shall I tell you how to make pancakes before we go any further? They're so easy, right? This is what you do. Say you want to make eight pancakes. What you do, eight ounces of plain flour, two eggs, about a pint of milk, maybe a little bit of salt, mix it all together, heat up some oil in a pan or get, if you're, you might be a bit too young for that, so get maybe one of your parents or one of your grown-ups to help you. Heat up some oil in the pan, pour a little bit in the middle of the pan, a little blob like that, swoosh your pan around like that so it fills up the pan, leave it to cook for a couple of minutes, then the fun bit. You get your pan, you sort of move it around so the pancake isn't sticking to the bottom, and then one, two, three, whoosh, you flip your pancake and then you cook the other side for a couple of minutes. That's it. Your pancake is done. It's so easy and it is so fun. So try it out. But yes, when I was little, my um, usually my mum would cook the pancakes for us or I would help her or my brother or sister would help her. And then once they were cooked, we'd have this flat pancake, but we would roll them up into sort of like a little sort of tube of pancake. And then we put a bit of lemon and a bit of sugar on because that's the other thing. People like all sorts of toppings on their pancakes, don't they? I know my girls, my daughters, they love a bit of Nutella. They love a bit of that chocolate Nutella stuff. Um, strawberries, um, what about a bit of golden syrup or honey, maple syrup, that kind of thing. Personally, for me, lemon and sugar. Fresh lemon juice, or that Jif lemon stuff, that's fine. Um, and sugar, and that's it. Classic, traditional, that's me. So we would roll up the pancakes, put a bit of lemon, put a bit of sugar on it, and that's it, that's how you'd eat it. So I thought with our pancake character today, I would do the top half of our pancake rolled up. And it gives us a nice bit of detail to add to our drawing. So, it's quite easy to do. It sounds complicated, but it's actually not. So what I want you to do, we're going to go to the top left side of our little pancake character, and we're going to go up like that, and then we're gonna go down quite sharply, about there, about that far. And can you see I've done it very slightly curving, like that. Okay, then we go to the bottom of that and we're gonna turn upwards sharply, and sort of curl up a bit like that, and stop about there, in the middle of the gap. Can you see what I'm doing? You're getting a picture now in your head? Then, we're gonna turn around again, 
and we're going to go right back down in between that gap and we're going to stop about there. So he's sort of done one of those little swirly whirly bits, you know, like the swirly whirly bits that I have in my signature, like that. So you know I love swirly whirly bits, don't you? I've done so many of them in my videos. Right, now this is the magic bit, because what you do now, you go to the top of this bit of swirl and you just draw a straight line across into that other line. Then you do the same from this bottom line here, just up there, into that. And can you see, it's starting to look like the end of something that's rolled up. Now then, all, don't worry if you can't see what I'm doing yet, all will become very clear very soon. The next thing I want you to do, we're gonna to go to the top here, so the very top part of our little curve. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go straight across the top, in a pretty much a straight line actually. Probably to about there. So not quite level with that, we're gonna go a bit short of that, okay? And then what we're going to do, actually let's go down here first, we're gonna to go to the bottom, the very bottom of that curve now. And we're gonna go across again, but this time we're just gonna go up a little bit in the middle. We're just going to go up a little bit in the middle and then we're just going to head back down a little bit as we get towards that end and again let's just stop before we get to that line there so now you can see what's happening here you can see our little pancake has kind of rolled up a little bit at the top do you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to make that not quite straight across i'm just going to come up a bit there because in actual fact it wouldn't be straight across there because that would be a sort of curvy bit so i fudged that a little bit but you remember what I say, when you make a little mistake or when you change your mind halfway through a drawing, don't worry about it at all. Don't screw your drawing up and start again. Just see if you can tweak it like I did there. Just tweaked it just a little tiny bit. And I keep going because often I think, I find it's those little sort of mistakes that you make. They're what adds character to your drawing. We don't want this drawing to be absolutely perfect. Honestly, we don't, that'd be so boring. Right, the next thing I want you to do, we're gonna go pretty much straight up here. So we're just gonna go up slightly bending outwards. We're gonna join those two together like that. And then the last bit of this drawing, we're gonna carry that on and join up right into that corner. Okay, so you can see, it looks like the top of our pancake has started to be rolled up, ready for some lemon and some sugar. <laughs> right, now remember, at the moment we have just drawn a pancake. We want to make this into a very cute little pancake character, right? So, let's add the character part. First of all, some legs. Now, I all, I quite often do my legs like this, very, very easy. What we do, we're just going to do two straight lines coming down in the centre, from the centre of our pancake, like that. Two little lines, and then we're just going to bend off to the left there, and bend off to the right there, just like that. You see? And that's our little pancake legs. The pancake arms. We're gonna do one arm coming down like that. And we're gonna do one arm coming down like that. And then, well, we do hands in lots of different ways. This time I think I'm gonna do it like this. What you're gonna do, I'm, ch I'm changing to a slightly thinner pen. I'm just gonna square off the ends of those lines because I've been using my nice thick brush pen. And then we're just gonna draw one little line coming out to the side. And then one, two, three, four little lines like that to make a little hand. So remember, one line coming out to the side for the thumb. One, two, three, four. Four little lines like that. And we have our two little pancake hands. Really starting to take shape, right? Let's give our pancake some eyes. That's the next thing to do. So we're just gonna do, I'm gonna do my eyes right down the bottom. It always looks a bit cuter when you do them down the bottom. So we're gonna do, I think I'll do them quite big. About that sort of size. One circle there, and one circle right next to it. Exactly the same size. There we go. <laughs> Two little pancake eyes. Let's do the pupils right in the center. We're gonna do a little circle that we color in. One there, one there, and there. Our pancake character is awake. Pretty cool, huh? Now, do you know what? I am going to colour mine in, okay? Because I am gonna add a mouth, I am gonna add some eyelashes, and I am gonna add some eyebrows to my pancake character. But, now I do this quite often, I want to colour in all of this area. I'm gonna do it sort of quite pale colour, sort of yellowy brown, pale brown, you know, like an actual pancake, with a few dots and spots here and there. 
And I'm going to colour that in before I put the eyebrows and the eyelashes and the mouth on because if I did them now, when it came to colouring, I might smudge the ink with my pencils. So it's much better to get your colour down, first of all, and then just draw over the top um, uh, with your pen. Now, the reason I didn't do that with the eyes is because I don't want the middle of my eyes to be coloured in, do I? Do you see what I mean? So that's my little exception to the rule. So I'm going to colour around those in order to leave the centre bits kind of white. But everything else, um, there's, no, there's, no kind of, there's no shapes as such. It's just sort of lines like a mouth and eyelashes and eyebrows. So that's why I've left that. Right, I'm going to go into super speed mode to colour my pancake in. I will see you back here in around about 20 seconds with a beautifully coloured, delicious looking pancake character. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so doesn't he look delicious? <laughs> so you can see I've coloured in my pancake. Now, I've several things to tell you about here with my colouring. I spent quite a long time on it. It didn't look like I did, but I did from my, um, uh, it didn't look like it did from my little sped up video, but I certainly did. I'm just going to go over these lines here because you can see, you know what I was talking about when I said um, the reason I didn't do the eyelashes and the eyebrows and stuff is because you know, I didn't want to go over it with a pencil. The other thing is that when you do colour over things with pencil, like I have here, um, it sort of tends to uh, dull uh, your black lines a little bit. So I'm just going to go over mine, just so the black ink is sitting now on top of the pencil a bit, and therefore sort of stands out a bit, because we want it to, we want the outline to stand out, because that's what gives our drawing its kind of definition, isn't it, these black, outline so I'm just going to go over it a little bit like that but yes the things the little techniques I've used that I'm going to tell you about now right the first thing that I've done well you can see I gave it all a base of the kind of the pale brown first of all and then I gradually usually you start with lighter colors and then you add darker colors as you go so what I did first of all I sort of the bit where the pancake is rolled up is going to be darker, right? Because it's going to be rolled up, which means this top bit is going to be casting a shadow on the pancake stuff underneath. So I, I sort of went darker and then gradually faded it down. It's almost as if there's a light over here that's shining down and this rolled up bit is casting a bit of shadow over the top part of our pancake. And what that does, by just adding the, the dark bit next to these light bits, it just creates the illusion of three dimensions. You see and it makes it look like your drawing is really actually 3d so i sort of faded that down using darker browns and sort of more orangey browns as well um and similarly on the bit that is rolled over but just by adding this sort of strip of dark shading there it makes it look like it's cylind cylind cylindrical 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 um and it makes it look like it's kind of round as opposed to just flat so it's a very easy way of um, creating a three-dimensional kind of roll shape. And again, I sort of gone darkish in the middle and then sort of gradually faded it out on both sides to make that look convincing. Similarly, these little rolly bits are quite dark, but slightly lighter than the bit behind, again, just to lift it forward. Then I added lots of circles and um, some colored in, some just outlined. Um, just to give it that kind of, I think that's pretty good, that pan, that sort of pancake texture um, with these circle things. And a lot, I don't know if you can see, I'll go a bit closer like that. You can see a lot, I've added lots of little tiny circles too, and little dots here and there. And again, that just adds to the whole texture thing. And here, look, I added a circle that I kind of faded out um, for cheeks, for like <laughs> rosy pancake cheeks and the little circles, little tiny ones I used as freckles too, just to add a little extra cuteness level to our drawing. Now then, remember what I said? I was gonna add a mouth. Let's add a mouth first. So I'm gonna do the mouth, I'm gonna make this nice and cute. I'm gonna add a little tiny mouth right in the middle of the eyes, like that. Just a little mouth, smiling away in between the cheeks and the freckles. Cute! This is so cute. Eyelashes. I'm going to do the eyelashes coming off to the side here. One, two, three. We'll do four. Let's do four eyelashes today. Three, 
or four eyelashes coming off each side and then the eyebrows we'll do them quite high up remember what i i always tell you this about eyebrows it's the eyebrows in a cartoon character that really help with showing the emotion that your character is feeling so if i wanted mine to be an angry pancake i would do my eyelashes going down in the middle worried up in the middle like that mine's quite happy as you can see smiling so i'm just going to add the eyebrows up here quite a long way above the eyes just like that just to make it look like a nice cheerful pancake character now what I want to add down here to make my drawing look even more three-dimensional I always tell you about this one of my favorite things to do I've taken a gray pencil today and I'm just going to do a bit of scribble just like that around my pancakes feet and I even quite like it when you you sort of leave it so you can see that it's scribbled you don't want to make it too kind of photographic but what I will do I've got a darker gray I'm going to do a bit of darker gray right next to the feet like that and it just helps to make it three-dimensional I've got an even darker gray which I'll do right next to the feet like that and as you can see it makes it look three-dimensional do you know what remember earlier on we were talking about toppings weren't we, we were talking about different toppings I'm a lemon and sugar guy, right? So I think I'm going to draw a little Jif lemon and a little sugar bowl on mine. But this is the point when you can do whatever you want. What do you like on your pancake? Have a think about what you like. As I said earlier, maybe you like strawberries and cream. And maybe you like raspberries or blueberries or banana and chocolate or just Nutella. Um, whatever you like, maybe some, maybe some golden syrup. Whatever you like, you can add maybe next to your pancake character. I'm going to go into super speed mode now and I'm going to draw a little squeezy Jif lemon and um, a sugar bowl I think. That's what I'm going to do so I'll see you back here in another 10 seconds or so. If you want to see how I draw it then maybe you can pause my super speed mode and you might be able to see how I do it but it's pretty straightforward. So I'll see you back here in a few seconds. Okay bye bye. <laughs> I've had my favourite added, sorry, added my favourite um, pancake toppings. A bit of lemon, jiff lemon, a little bit of sugar. That's it. Perfect. Perfect for me. I wonder what you guys have added. I can't wait to see. Right. One more thing left to do, guys. What am I going to say? That's right. Sign your picture. Let's do full signature today. Why not? Roll it off. There we go picture signed it just always sort of finishes off an artwork i think your little signature and also it lets everybody know who has created this wonderful work of art so there we go my very special little pancake character especially for pancake day um so uh i can't wait to see yours as i said how will i get to see yours well why don't you get your grown-up to post it on social media using this hashtag draw with Rob that way I will get to see it if you're watching this on Facebook you can comment below with a picture of your drawing that way I will get to see it too um and I really want to see it because apart from anything else I want to know what what the children of the world prefer to eat with their pancakes <laughs> so depending on what toppings you have drawn I will get to see what you what you like to eat so I'm super excited about that I hope you've enjoyed drawing this with me today uh, before I go what else can I tell you oh yes that if you're watching on YouTube why don't you uh, click your little notifications button and subscribe to my channel that way you'll get told when a new video is coming out speaking of subscribing if you go to my website here it is, here's the address, go there and uh, you can sign up for my free little newsletter thing, email newsletter thing and that way you will get an email telling you when a new video is coming out, when I'm on tour, when I've got a new book, all the stuff about me basically, I'll send it straight to your inbox. First of all, that way you get to keep up to date with all of my stuff. So listen, it's been so much fun showing you how to draw this pancake character. It's a big day, pancake day, right? It might not be quite up there with Christmas, but you know, it's getting there, is it? It's not really, I just really like pancakes, let's be honest. Um, I hope you've had fun. Can't wait to see your drawings. Until I see you next, keep on reading, people. Keep on drawing, keep those pencils sharpened, and I'll see you again very soon with another episode of Draw With Rob. Bye, everyone.
everyone, it's Rob here. I hope you enjoyed your Draw With Rob video. I'm just popping up here again at the end. I've got Ringo with me, as you can see. He's having a bit of a nap at the moment. Um, but I just popped up here to tell you about my brand new Draw With Rob activity book. And this is it. It's called Draw With Rob in Space, an out of this world art activity book. And I think you're really gonna like this one. So what's inside it? Well, we have um, lots of puzzles. Uh, like these ones. We have some bits where I've started off the drawing and you guys have to finish the drawing off. I really like this one. It shows the cockpit of a spaceship and you have to add the controls. We have some crafting ideas for you. There's even a card game in there too. And of course, plenty of our usual draw alongs like these guys. And of course, once you've done your draw alongs, you, you draw them in the little frame that I have made next to the instructions. And then can you see here, look, the pages, you probably can't see, but the pages are perforated down that side. So once you've done your drawing here, you just tear the page out, stick it up on the fridge, ready to display. And then once you've finished the entire book, once you've been through the whole activity book, you've got a nice certificate. You know, this is to certify that your name is officially a space superstar. So lots and lots of interstellar entertainment for you to keep you occupied when you're not watching a Draw With Rob video. The book is available now um, from wherever you get your books. Try and support your local bookshop if you can. Um, and if you get it and you enjoy it, please let me know and send me lots of your pictures. I love to see your pictures. Right, that's it, I'm done. You can get on with the rest of your day now. I will see you very soon for another episode Draw with Rob. Bye, everyone.